Welcome, Science 10, to physics, energy, and motion. That was terrifying. So today we're going to be talking about analyzing and measuring motion in terms of displacement and distance. Really, it's just, where'd you go? Woo! I miss you so. Wow, rhyme time. Yeah, let's see if anybody can name the song. So there's two types of measurements we talk about. Scalar measurements, which just strictly measure magnitude. It's a size or quantity. It has nothing to do with direction. Examples of this would be mass, volume, speed, distance, time, whatever the case may be. Typically, these are things that normally we only think of like if it's time or distance, go forward. Once we get into vector measurements, we're me measuring the magnitude still. We still got the number, but we're also looking at direction. And normally, it's not just direction. It's direction from a reference point. <gasps> so, one of the big things that physicists love is the difference between mass and weight. Weight is actually your force downwards. Velocity looks just like speed, but it's got a direction. Displacement kind of looks like distance, but with a direction. And acceleration is everybody's least favorite topic, but it's a lot of fun. Essentially, normally, these will have an arrow attached to them. The arrow is actually what turns them into a vector. So, V was speed. V with an arrow is velocity, which didn't really show up here on the right side, but the velocity and the displacement should have their little arrows on top. And the arrow means direction, aka vectors. So some exciting new physics terms. Distance. Again, we have a scalar quantity like we talked about in the last um, last path, the, uh, the distance is just the total length of path traveled. So again, if you're thinking of this, uh, if you're taking a whole bunch of turns, le left and right going, walking through the blocks, it's your total distance covered. Okay, it's usually greater than the displacement value, but not necessarily always true. Okay, it's equal to the, to the displacement if the path traveled is straight and in one direction. Okay, again, the symbol we look at for this, since it's scalar, is a lowercase d with no arrow above it. Displacement is like distance, except it's a vector. So now we have that magnitude, we have that measure, but we also have to worry about our direction. So if you have a straight line, really we're just looking at the distance from the start to the finish, and what direction did you go. However, if you go forwards and then backwards, we only care about how far you are from where you started. That's this reference, whoops, I don't have a pen finger, reference point that it's talking about. If the question doesn't specify a reference, the reference will always be, where did you start? So here's a nice visual as to what we're talking about, uh, uh, the key differences between distance and displacement. Again, as we can see with the, the red line here, the, the distance we're covering is significantly longer than from where we started. So again, we're, we're taking a whole bunch of different path routes than, the, than what we would go straight to that final position. So again, if we end up at x, okay, the displacement is just how far in a straight line from where we originally started. Now, when we look at the measures underneath here, we see distance is 8 kilometers. Nice and easy. Displacement is 3 kilometers. But the one thing that would mark this as different is we need to give it a direction. In this case, most of Science 10 is going to work with simple vector components of north, south, east, west, forward, backwards, left, right, up, down. You don't have to worry about combinations of the two. This one, however, looks like it goes north and west. So we would just say that it's three kilometers, or sorry, northeast. We would just say that it's three kilometers northeast, not northwest. It's too early in the morning. Sample problem, yay. Mr. Rainier runs uh, 10 laps of a 400 meter circular track. What was the total distance traveled? So obviously this is a pretty straightforward question. Okay, we have a 400 meter track. Okay, I'm running 10 laps around it. So the total distance covered, we would end up going 10 times 400 meters to give us an answer of what, Mr. McLeod? 4,000. Woo! 4,000 meters. If you want to get really fun with units, you can even say that this was 10 laps times 400 meters per lap and the laps cancel out. You don't have to show that kind of stuff, but it actually is the thinking that should be going on in your head. Now, what is his displacement? This is the fun one. We're going to draw a picture. Here is the track. This might not actually look like a track. That's fine. After you've gone around this thing 10 times and you've come back to right here, which is where you started, 
How far are you from where you started? Zero! Yay! So, this doesn't need a direction. The magnitude is zero. That means it is exactly where it is at the reference point. This is a very common physics problem. Things going in circles. Uh, if you get up in the morning and you come to school and you do some school work and then you go home at the end of the day and you get back into bed, your displacement for the day is zero. zero. And you essentially went nowhere. So, how do we calculate your displacement if we have two positions? Well, normally we're going to use one of these two formulas the way they look. They're the same thing. This little delta right here just means change. There it is. Change in displacement or change in position. So it's always going to be d2 minus d1, implying that d1 was your first spot. Or the other way that we look at this is df minus di. We don't care which one you use as long as you know that that is where did you start and where did you finish. How did you actually get there? Okay, so when we take a look at solving displacement problems when the, when the direction changes, this is a, a very general formula what we talked about. Okay, so when we take a look at um, our total distance or our total displacement, this formula can work either way depending on the values that you're plugging into the formula. If you are using distance values with no direction, then it's a simple addition of all of the total distances traveled in one direction. Okay, now if you're starting to plug in and turning this into a vector, Okay, the only thing we need to be worried about here is direction. Okay, so with each change in displacement that we're looking at for our, uh, for our problem, okay, we need to be assigning directions with signs. Okay, obviously north and west by convention are, are indicated with a positive sign, and south and east are indicated with a negative sign. If I can throw an add-on on there, it's not just north and west. Positive sign is also going to be forward, up, Right. If you're ever not sure, just tell us at the beginning of the problem, I am going to make this direction positive. But for the most part, if you can stick to the convention, everybody's work will look roughly the same. It'll be a lot easier for you to compare with your peers. Mr. Rayner is standing at a position described by D0, position 0, of positive 5 meters. And the garbage is at a position described by DM, not sure why that's an M. Sure, it's <laughs> negative 12 meters. So essentially, if we were drawing this out to figure out its displacement, we have our reference point, which is here. Now, the reference point actually isn't that important. What we have, though, is Mr. Rainer. Wow, that's I'm not a, sure that's why he's picture. standing sideways like that. Mr. Rainer is standing at positive 5 meters. Where is the garbage? Now, because it's negative, that means we need to go in the other direction. Draw a little trash can there. Oh, that's great. Look at that. Put a little lid on the top. This is in the positive direction for Rainier. Positive. This is the negative direction for the garbage can. So how do we figure out the displacement between them? Well, we pick one to be the final. We pick one to be the initial. What we're going to get is that the garbage can is negative 12 minus Rainier's positive 5 gives us negative, oh dear, <laughs> negative <laughs> 17 meters. If we look at this where Rainier is point number 2, it's the positive 5 minus the negative 12 gives us a positive 17 meters. So the magnitude is the same because they are the same distance apart. Just for the garbage can, the garbage can looks like it's behind Rainier, whereas Rainier looks like he is in front of the garbage can. Sample problem using known vectors. You walk 15 meters north and then 10 meters south. What is the total distance you have walked? Okay, so again, with total distance, all we're looking at here is the magnitude of the vector or the magnitude of the distances we travel. Okay, so we have distance one is 15 meters. Okay, distance two is 10 meters. We need to so, stop using the number five. They all look like sixes. I know. <laughs> oh no, there goes one. Okay, anyways, so we're gonna look at the total change in distance. Oh, bad, Mr. R. Bad. 
Okay, your change in distance is just D1 plus D2, and we're just simply adding our two numbers together. Okay, direction really doesn't matter with distance, so we get an answer of 25 meters. Now, with the displacement, okay, now we're going to take a look and we add in direction. So we know our displacement one is 15 meters north, and the displacement two is 10 meters south. Okay, so all we're going to do here is instead of using north and south, I'm going to quickly transfer this into positives and negatives. Okay, so I have a positive 15 and a negative 10 meters, and we are going to find our change in displacement now. Ah, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, so we're going to plug in the values, so we end up seeing negative 10 meters plus 15 meters, and we get an answer of a positive 5 meters. Now, at the end of this, all we're going to take a look at is that positive turns back into north, and we have now answered our question. Done. And done. The thing that is great for Physics 20 moving forward, guys, is Rainer has done it perfectly up here. Even though the number is positive, include an extra positive so that you know that you are looking at a vector, not just a, oh, I'm not 100% sure what that is. Sometimes, guys, what you end up seeing is in this area here, what Mr. McLeod just said there is, in case that's two negatives, then you have to change the operation as a result. So you want to make sure you're keeping track of that so you don't mess up on a simple mistake like that. And you just don't want to leave directions out and forget about them for silly reasons. All right, be sure to always use directions in your answer. Draw diagrams, it can help you, kind of like uh, we did with uh, Rainier and the garbage can. Um, as we get into this next example, drawing a picture is going to be very helpful. Yeah, exactly. Um, but make sure you always include the direction, as long as it's a vector. Joey drives a skidoo seven kilometers north. He stops for lunch, and then he drives five kilometers east. What is the distance he covered? What is his displacement? All right, so distance is always really easy. D is equal to D1 plus D2 plus D. It would keep going, but we don't have any of that. We've only got the two. This is going to be seven kilometers plus five kilometers. Gives us 13 kilometers. Riveting, riveting. As we get into the displacement, though, the two directions are a little bit different. So his displacement is seven kilometers north plus five kilometers east. Now this comes back down to elementary school when we first started asking you guys like, if you have four oranges and I eat two apples, how many pears do you have? Don't worry about adding these things together. There is a problem here and the problem is north and east are not in the same one direction. We can't just add them together. So what do we do? Draw a picture. So what we're going to take a look at here is we have seven kilometers north. So I'm going to represent that by a relative vector. It doesn't need to be an exact two scale drawing here, but we're going to show you a picture to help us figure this out. So we traveled the seven kilometers north, and then we're traveling five kilometers east. Okay, so this is starting to look like something pretty magical to solve this problem. Okay, so instead of directly just adding, again, displacement is the shortest distance before, between from where you started to where you ended. Okay, so now if we take a look at we are going to connect that here. Okay, and this becomes your displacement. Look kind of familiar from math class? Why it should, because this is a right triangle. So how are we going to solve this, McLeod? Uh, at this point, we've got the north, we've got the east, they are not in the same one dimension. However, we know that this side is 7, we know this side is 5. If only there was some mathematical formula hmm, for finding weird. a hypotenuse, and it looks something like this. Pythagorean theorem! So really quickly, we would take 7 squared plus 5 That's a good squared. Five. That's a good job. Uh, 49 plus 25 is 60, 70. Good thing we can quickly type this out. 70. Four? 74, yeah. 
But that is c squared, so we have to remember to take the square root at the very end. 8.6. C is equal to 8.6. And in math, hopefully, they told you the hypotenuse is always the longest side. So 8.6 is greater than 7 and 5. I must have done this right. Happy days. Moving on. There is your Pythagorean theorem if you would like it in a nice, neat, not hand-drawn formula. Um, ladies and gentlemen, if you have formulas or if you have questions where you are seeing north and west, things that are not all in one direction, you could throw Pythagorean on there just to find the value. The only thing that we were missing in the last one was if this is a displacement, what direction is it? It's 8.6 meters. Northeast. We don't really care about how far northeast it went. That's something we'll figure out in physics 20. For now, as long as you know that that goes north and east, we're happy. Let's move through the classroom to flirt with that special someone. You know who. Okay, You have to move 2.0 meters west and then 1.5 meters north. What is your distance traveled? What is your displacement? So again, we're going to take a look at this. Example, and again, we're going to find distance just like we had before. Ah, you know what? We can probably just jump to the answer on this one. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so your distance traveled, guys. Give it a shot. You should get three and a half. I don't know why the pen's changing color on me, but that's great. And our displacement, if we go through the calculation, we have two directions. So we'd be using uh, Pythagoras' theorem and... We're going to we get two and a half meters northwest. So what we want you to do with this one is we want you to take a pause the video right now, make sure you get these answers, work through the problems yourselves just like the ones we previously used, and make sure you get these answers so that we are A-OK -okay for tomorrow. If not, I guess uh, if you get that wrong, we'll be talking to you first thing tomorrow. The last thing we can point out here is a nice little balancing check. Ladies and gentlemen, when you look at these two values, distance should always be the greater one. They are either going to be equal or the distance will be greater. If you ever get the displacement is greater, you have really, really screwed up. Till next time, Science 10. You're not going to say, say classy? Wow. No, you just did.